Calculations for weak acids and bases are a little bit more complicated than calculations for strong acids and bases. So the first thing in knowing how to solve a problem for weak acids and bases, of course, is to be able to identify them. Now there are actually more weak acids and bases than there are strong ones. So here we have a table of strong acids and bases. If you memorize or learn the strong acids and bases, which are just a few, then all the other acids and bases by default will be weak. And again, that is the first step in being able to solve these types of problems. If you don't know if it's a strong acid or base, then you may not know which type of calculation to perform in order to find out information such as H plus or OH concentrations, pHs and pOHs. So let's take a quick look at what constitutes a strong acid. So we have of course H plus being a part of an acid and so we have three acids that come from the halogen group, group number seven and that is HCl, HI, and HBr. Only these three halogens, when paired up with hydrogen, will make a strong acid. We also have hydrogen when combined with three polyatomic ions, NO3 to make nitric acid, SO4 to make sulfuric acid, and ClO4 to make perchloric acid. These six acids are strong. All the others you can then assume to be weak. And if they are weak, then you would proceed with the weak acid type calculation. If it's a strong acid, then of course you can solve it much more readily. And again, there will, uh, there will be a tutorial on strong acid-based calculations, and I will link that uh, in the description box for you. So let's take a look at what would constitute a strong base. And so a strong base, of course, bases, as you know, are going to have a hydroxide group in them. So if you have a hydroxide group then or you produce a hydroxide group either or then you would be considered to be a base. So what would make a strong base? Well a group one metal when combined with hydroxide, a group two metal when combined with a hydroxide with the exception of beryllium would make a strong base. So let's say group one Sodium with hydroxide makes sodium hydroxide. Group two, such as magnesium or calcium with hydroxide makes magnesium or calcium hydroxide. So these, this is a very good way of learning your strong acids and bases and therefore being able to identify what is strong and what is weak. If it's strong, you would simply use your pH equals negative log of H plus concentration and your pOH is equal to the negative log of OH concentration and if you wanted to find pH from that you could of course do the pH plus pOH is equal to 14 equation and plug in your pOH subtract from 14 and you find pH for a base so obviously this is for a base and this is for an acid this is of course only for strong acids and bases where you could just easily plug in a concentration of H and plug in a concentration of OH and be done with it. But weak acids are a little bit trickier because we don't know how much H plus a weak acid is going to give us. We don't know how much hydroxide ion is going to be produced when a weak, uh, when a weak base dissociates. In a strong gas, it's 100%, and so we know exactly how much it's going to be. But in a weak acid, it's, un, it's unknown. So let's see what we, mean, what we mean by that. Looking at this particular graph right here, this is going to show you the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. And the same would go for a strong base versus a weak base. So you have here HCl that ionizes into H plus and Cl minus. That being said, at the beginning of the reaction, it's all HCl. At the end of the reaction, notice how we have no HCl remaining at all. It is all converted into H plus and Cl minus. 
Now, the reason for that, again, is because what we have is a 100% dissociation. 100% of this acid dissociates. So whatever you have gets converted 100% into these two equally right there. However, in a weak acid, it's not a single arrow as you would expect, but rather a double arrow. So it is a weak electrolyte, so you have a forward and a reverse direction. Start here. So let's take a look at HCl. HCl has one arrow, one direction, meaning that it is going to convert itself and dissociate 100% to H plus and Cl minus. So at the end we have no H plus remaining, but all of it converted into H and Cl equally. As you can see, these are equal amounts. When you have HF, which is a weak acid, you'll find that it is not just one arrow, but rather two arrows. So it is a bidirectional reaction. It is a weak acid or electrolyte. So just as HF dissociates using the forward direction to form H plus and F minus, using the back arrow here, H plus and F minus could reform HF in its molecular form once again. So exactly how much of this HF is converted to H plus and F minus? It's unknown. And it will vary with every single acid and base. So the amount of dissociation and of course then ion concentration varies each and every time. But one thing is for certain. You will see that at the end of the reaction, at the end of the dissociation, you still have plenty of HF left over. Some of it has been converted to H and to F, and again, they are in equal amounts of H plus and F minus. But the majority of the solution remains in its molecular form. Not a lot of H has been produced. Less H plus, the weaker the acid. 